Welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm Judy Taylor, President of the Habersham County Chamber of Commerce, and thank you for joining us today. I have three interesting guests, so please stay with us the entire time, or you're going to miss something. My first guest today is State Representative Terry Rogers. Terry, welcome to Chamber Chat. Glad to be with you, Judy. Well, we appreciate your being here today, and uh, is it okay if I call you Terry? Most definitely. Okay. <laughs> that's, I, who, that's who I am. I was trying to call you Representative Rogers, but that's pretty hard for me. That's right. We've known each other too long. We have. Good. Um, Terry, uh, I wanted to talk to you about a lot of things. We're certainly wanting to talk about what went on in the session. Sure. But uh, let's let our audience know. Uh, now, a uh, the term for a representative is two years. That's correct. But this was actually your first session. So you want to explain that? Yeah, we had a special election on November the 8th. And actually what I did was I ran to fill the unexpired term of Rick Austin. Right. Which uh, ends at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so this... The, the session works in, 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 a, in such a way that there are two sessions, one each year, but mm -hmm. they're all part of the same thing. Mm -hmm. but, so I came right into the second part of a two-part session mm -hmm. and actually uh, will qualify again for re-election. That is right. In, uh, in May, mm -hmm. and, and then the primary would be in July, the general election in November. Mm -hmm. That is right. And um, uh, Terry, uh, I know from the times that I have talked with you while you were in session and we were getting ready for Habersham County Day and a lot of things, I know that you have been extremely busy and you stayed busy all during that session and you hit the ground running. But let's talk about some of the things that went on in the, in the session. I know that you worked on a new tax reform bill. Tell us how that will impact us. Tell us what I, it is. Uh, well, I tell you, I think, it, I think it's a great thing. Uh, one of the things, Judy, when I ran for office, one of the things I said was my top priority, my top focus has to be the economy and has to be jobs. Mm -hmm. I mean, for us to be sitting right at 10% unemployment is unbelievable. And I just happen to believe from a conservative standpoint that in order to create more jobs, we have to be cutting taxes and mm -hmm. we have to eliminate some government waste and to do the things that are necessary. The governor obviously felt the same way. He had a tax bill that he rolled out this year and we passed passed it uh, overwhelmingly in both the House and the Senate. He signed, he's signed, he has either signed it already or going to sign it within the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. But it's going to have a tremendous impact, uh, especially in the aspect of corporate taxes, which are very, very important to us. Probably the main thing that happened that came out of this tax bill on the, on the co corporate side of things is that we eliminated the energy tax uh, the energy sales tax for manufacturing in the state of Georgia. That's wonderful. So over the next four years, um, you will see people like Habersham uh, Steel Sale, mm -hmm. Field Dale, Ethicon, people of this nature will be saving. Mount Vernon Mills is a great example. They'll be saving a ton of money every year by not paying the sales tax on energy. And that's money that can be passed on down to their employers, put back into capital or, or Create things more of that jobs. Nature. Create more jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, what, it, what it basically did was level the playing field for us because everybody around us had it. And quite honestly, we would have never attracted Caterpillar to Athens or Baxter to... Uh, to Covington, like we have done. Mm -hmm. That's about 3,000 jobs that have come into Georgia. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it says a direct result of the fact that we, they knew that we were going to do this. Great, great thing. That was my question was, are other states around us doing it? They are. And actually what we've done is we've leveled the playing field. We're trying to make Georgia the number one place in the nation to do business. Now, there were some other things that happened in the tax bill that, that are great for an individual standpoint. Probably the biggest thing that will impact everyone uh, in, in our area is the fact that you'll no longer be paying an ad valorem tax on your car tag. So if you That's buy, if, if you buy, a, if you're like me, I hate going on my birthday and mm -hmm. buying car tags and paying mm -hmm. that tax. What will happen from now on is if you buy a car, instead of paying the 7% sales tax, you'll pay 6.5% next year, one-time fee. And what that does is, is that covers your title fee and everything. And then you will only pay each year the $20 for the tag fee. This is on both new and used cars. So I think that's good. And then the, the other thing that is going to have a, a really an immediate impact on people is that we've eliminated the marriage penalty on, on state income tax. From now on, instead of getting a $5,400 deduction if you're married, you'll get a $7,400 deduction. So people will start seeing money coming into their pockets right away from that. This sounds like a great session to me. It sounds like a lot of work was done, and it sounds as if it's a lot of stuff that will help us. I think I think it, it, it is. Um, I, I think the governor has jumped in. He's very 
business friendly. He understands that we have to create jobs. We need to do what's best for the people of Georgia. You're right. He's, he's managed to pull the House and the Senate together to work in on things, and it's mm -hmm. going to be strong. Mm -hmm. It's going to be strong. Wonderful. Well, Terry, on the news, I'd watch the news, I heard a lot about drug testing for welfare recipients. Right. Tell us about that. Did that pass? Or it, it, it did pass. It did pass. Passed both the House and the Senate. And uh, the governor, matter of fact, I guess it was last week or the first part of this week, went ahead and signed the bill. Now, this was a bill that was introduced, actually authored by Michael Harden, who is going to be representing part of Habersham County mm -hmm. starting, uh, starting next year. It's something right. that Michael has worked on for three years. And, and basically what it says is if you're going to take money from TANF or TANF, mm -hmm. the Assistance for Needy Families, then you can randomly be tested uh, for drugs. And if you fail, you don't get the money. Now, there's a lot of concern about what about kids? How is that going to impact them or whatever? What will happen is you'll be allowed to, uh, there, someone will be designated to get those benefits for the children. Okay. And, uh, and the money will follow the child. And uh, it gives an opportunity for parents to get their life back straight, for people to realize, hey, this is impacting my kids and mm -hmm. let's do the right thing. And quite frankly, I mean, if you go to work for a private company, they test. They test. And you know what? If you're going to take government taxpayer money, I see no reason whatsoever uh, that the taxpayers don't deserve to know that you're not using it for drugs. I agree. And uh, Terry, we don't have much time left, but let's quickly talk about Habersham County Day at the Capitol. You were wonderful. I talked with you so many times, and uh, we carried about 70 people out there, 75, as you know. And you had so many people, uh, legislators, lined up to speak to us that day. It was a great day at the Capitol. And uh, I know you're already having ideas about next year. I, I am. I tell you, I, I, I had a real good time. You know, we, we kind of had a little glitch that we thought the week beforehand because we weren't going back into session until 1 o'clock and y'all were planning on being there at 10. And actually it worked out great because we got to do a private tour of the House. You got to go ahead and go on over to the Senate. Mm -hmm. And then the lunch was scheduled right next door to where the Republican caucus was meeting. So you had an opportunity for a number of legislators to come by, the governor's floor leaders, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, people that work for the governor, mm -hmm. the the uh chairman of the Small Business Development Committee, David Knight, who spoke to us, and right. uh, Habersham County represented themselves well and, and left a very, very positive uh, impression, and I still have people come up to me asking about uh, the Webb's honey, saying, where can I get more honey? Well, that sounds good because every year we take uh, a gift to the legislators that is, is always that honey. Well, the honey is always well received. As a mm -hmm. matter of fact, Gene Maddox, who sat next to me uh, during the session, is retiring this year, and he said, Terry, what am I going to do about honey? And I said, Dr. Gene, I guess what I have to do is send you some every couple of months, so I'll do that. It. Terry, you did an outstanding job helping arrange that. It was the best day that we have had, and I'm already looking forward to next year because if I know you, you're going to be doing something a little different, and it, you'll be very creative with it. Uh, but, uh, Terry, I can't believe it, but our time is up. I'll just have to have you back. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be glad to come back anytime, and, and I do want to just say how much I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I, I appreciate the opportunity to represent Habersham and White Counties and to be your representative, and, and I truly take the title seriously. Uh, I do want to represent you, so if you ever need anything, get in touch with me. Terry, I believe that with all my heart. You have, you have proven that. We appreciate what you have done for Habersham County during the session, but you're not stopping now. You're still just going on as if you were, uh, you're working constantly for us, and we appreciate that. Well, we're, we're on the roll all the time, so don't hesitate mm -hmm. to call. Thank you for being on Chamber Chat today, and please stay with us. We're going to take a short commercial break, and we will be right back with our May Member of the Month, the Chamber's Member of the Month. I'm so glad my doctor delivers at Chestnut Regional Hospital in Dahlonega. From the moment I arrived, I was pampered by dedicated nurses who really care. A large private room provided a warm and comfortable environment, and they even served a gourmet dinner to celebrate our little girl's arrival. Chestnut Hospital helped make this joyous event more than we ever expected. Thank you for staying with us. Our next guest today is the Chamber's May Member of the Month, Bob Guthrie with Northeast Georgia Signs and Services. Welcome, Bob, to Chamber Chat. 
Thanks, Judy. Appreciate it. this opportunity, and, uh, and I'm glad you picked us as a uh, member of the month. That's, a, well, the that's board, a good recognition. The board voted unanimously, Bob, to make you mm -hmm. member of the month, and congratulations. Thank you. And the reason they did it, Bob, you helped the chamber so very much. We have a criteria. They don't just pull somebody out of the blue. We have a criteria, and you have helped us so many times with signs, whenever we needed signs. You helped us with member of the month signs. In fact, the sign that you made for member of the month will get put back in your yard now. Oh, that's good. So we'll come down and, and, uh, and, and put that up so everybody will know that you are a member of the month. And I believe also that you've just uh, finished making some signs indirectly for the chamber that are to mark the Southern High Roads Trail. Yes, those were just completed, I think, last week. That's right. And uh, actually, the Chamber's not paying for those, thank goodness, mm -hmm. but Southern High Roads Trail is, but the Chamber is the one that got the Habersham on the Southern High Roads Trail. We're the one that's got the loop marked. Oh, yeah. And Southern High Roads Trail is now paying for the signs to, to mark the loop. So we're looking forward to getting those signs up. And, Bob, uh, I'm not real sure how long you've been in Habersham County. I know not all your, your career has been in Habersham County. But uh, uh, when was Northeast Georgia Signs established in Habersham County? Well, I had a sign company down in the Atlanta area up until the year 2000, and I sold that and um, established Northeast Georgia Signs and Service here in Cornelia in uh, June of 2000. How did you come about deciding to do it in Habersham County? Did you do market research? Yes, I asked my wife where she was from, and she said Hollywood up here in Habersham <laughs> County, and that was about the extent of the research that we had to do. That's so good. We, uh, we sort of uh, came up here in sort of semi-retirement, mm -hmm. but now the company has grown back to where it's larger than the one I had in Atlanta. So. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. That is very yeah. good to hear. And, uh, Bob, tell our audience where you're located because you're down on the south end of the county, not just exactly in the hub around Cornelia. And uh, so tell them where you are down there. We're located at, uh, in the, we have a 7,000 square foot warehouse at Anderson Village beside 365 South. And we're located a little south for, because we still have a lot of work in the Atlanta area mm -hmm. and that enable us to service the surrounding counties up here and still be within a reasonable driving distance of uh, the Atlanta area. Mm -hmm. Right. That, and that 365 is just a good access to get onto I-85 or wherever. Yes, it is. And, Bob, you know that uh, small businesses drive the economy of this nation. More jobs are created from small businesses than any other way. How many employees do you have or how many jobs has your small business created? Well, when we came up here, we started with three employees and uh, we're up now to seven. Um, most of that occurred during the past year. We hired a, a sales manager when the economy went south on us and uh, we needed additional sales help. We hired uh, Laurie Jones, a local uh, lady from up here, mm -hmm. and she's been doing an excellent job in sales area. And we actually increased the uh, sales in uh, 2011 to about 30 to 40 percent over the sales in 2010, and we're looking at a similar increase this year, even with the economy mm -hmm. uh, where it's at. That sounds good. She's really doing her job, isn't she? She's working she? hard. She's hard working. That is good. Now, we know that the name of your company is Northeast Georgia Signs and Services, but tell our audience exactly what your products and services are. Well, we like to pride ourselves in being a full-service sign company. Uh, we do pretty much all types of signs, whether it be the large electronic message center signs like we did at the high school up here in the new high school. Now, that's the electronic ones that Electronic roll. message centers mm -hmm. that you com computer control, which means you've got to be able to uh, not only service electronic signs, but also the computer uh, programs that drive those signs. And then we also do screen printing, uh, routing, sandblasting, pretty much every other type of sign that's out there. And then we do a lot of small stuff mm -hmm. because we have a lot of smaller customers here. So we do uh, vehicle lettering, magnetics, uh, real estate signs, and uh, a lot of other banners and all for the uh, various sponsor clubs here in the county. And then just recently we added a direct garment uh, printer so we can now print full did. color images on t-shirts and other apparel. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking that you had that t-shirt ability down. 
Right. And, uh, and, and that is very interesting. What is your service area, Bob? How far will you go to serve a customer? To Atlanta, I know. Well, we have we do some service for Zaxby's uh, stores around the east side of Atlanta, on you know, out towards Athens in that area. We try to stay within about a two-hour drive of where we're at here as far as our service area is concerned. Mm -hmm. But we actually manufacture and ship signs into Florida, Texas, uh, California, okay. you know, and other states around. Interstate commerce there. So. Yes. Uh, very good. Uh, Bob, there, there are several sign, sign companies around, as you know, but you seem to be doing so well. And uh, you were just talking about how you had, uh, you know, you'd hired a, a sales manager and your uh, sales were picking up. What is it, do you think that, what would you say sets you apart from other sign companies? What's, what's unique, what's different about Northeast Georgia Signs and Services? Well, Judy, I think the most, one of the most important things, and that's how we've been able to continue to expand during the economy being down the way it is, is um, we have a very diverse customer base. Uh, we're not centered in one area. In fact, we're very lightly involved in the real estate market, so that when that went down, it didn't really affect us that much. But we have uh, some national accounts, large national accounts. We have some um, fairly large regional accounts, and then we also have the small individual accounts, which we really appreciate on a local basis because that really does help level things out. That's like us. That's like yeah. the chamber. <laughs> yeah. Yes, okay. it is. Oh, um, Bob, I'm, as a chamber president, I'm always interested in how businesses are doing, and you've answered that. But what do you see as a future for Northeast Georgia Science? I think we'll continue uh, the program we have underway today, which would enable us to continue to expand even if the economy doesn't. But I believe that with the upcoming elections in the end of this year, I'm uh, hopeful that we'll see a change and we'll see uh, businessmen uh, begin to turn loose of more money and to get a little more optimistic about the future. And mm -hmm. when that occurs, then not only us but other local companies should see a significant increase in volume. Uh, so we're hoping that 2012 that we could see you know, a very significant increase in our sales volume and that we would probably be hiring another um, you know, three or four people. That sounds good. The creation of jobs sounds really good. Bob, I know that you're in very involved in the community in several ways. Uh, tell, tell our audience some of the things that you're in, uh, civic organizations, those types mm -hmm. of things. Well, I've been a member of the Rotary Club now for several years, the Habersham County Rotary Club, and, uh, and I participate in the Chambers Leads Group. Absolutely. Uh, Leads Group. Which good is a very, chamber member. And that's a very good program that you've got going there. And mm -hmm. we have probably 20 people or more at lunch meetings mm -hmm. uh, on the first and third Tuesdays. Uh, I'm also the uh, service officer for um, the VFW Post uh, 7720 that I'm uh, a member of here in, in uh You're in a veteran. Cornelia, right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I'm also the chairman of the uh, Habersham County Republican Party. Right. And uh, that keeps us pretty busy too, especially mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. when right. it's election time. I knew you were just very, very involved. Bob, our time is up, but still, tell our audience how to get in touch with you, your telephone number, and website. Well, our website needs some updating. Okay. But uh, we are, uh, our website is uh, any Georgia signs at, um, I mean, it's, well, it's just www.nygeorgiasigns.com. And they can reach us on uh, email at uh, N-E-G-A signs at windstream.net. Okay. Or they can call us at 706-778-8608. Very good. Bob, thank you so much for being my guest today on Chamber Chat. But more than that, thank you for being such a great Chamber member and so supportive of the Chamber. And congratulations on being the Board's Choice for Member of the Month. Thank you, Judy. Appreciate it. Please stay with us. We're going to take another short break, and we'll be right back with the last guest for today. From around the world news to local entertainment, you'll only find on Channel 4. Local people and local service from people in your community you know and trust. Windstream Cable Television. Thank you for staying with us. My next guest today is Nanette Ballman, and Nanette is the director of the Athens YWCO camp in Habersham County. 
Nanette, welcome to Chamber Chat. Well, thank you, Miss Judy. I appreciate, I always appreciate the time to get to talk about camp. I know you do. But I've got to tell you something, Nanette. Every time I say your name, I think about, no, no, Nanette. Well, Did that musical influence your name? I have been told that that had a part in my dad helping choose what name I had. I have been told that. I figured that it did. <laughs> and Nanette, I have often said that the Athens YWCO Camp and Retreat in Haversham County is the best kept secret in the county because you have wonderful facilities out there, but I'm not sure that everybody knows exactly where you are and exactly what you, what services you provide. So, uh, tell us uh, about the services that you provide out at YWCO Camp. Okay. We do hear that a lot. Um, it's kind of nice being back in the woods by ourselves. We are, our camp and retreat center is located, if believe it or not, halfway between Hollywood and Turnerville. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, a real short. But little, it's not right on the highway. Difference. We are off of the old historic 441 on Dooley Road. Mm -hmm. a, lot of pe a lot of the locals will know Dooley Road. Mm -hmm. um, we are a, in the summer, which coming up very soon, mm -hmm. we will be loud and crazy. We are an all-girls, non-denominational Christian camp serving girls from ages 7 to 17. And it is a fun traditional camp plus a horseback specialty program where girls come strictly to hone their horseback skills. This time of year or the rest of the year we are a retreat center where we offer banquets, um, weekend groups, we, we do a lot of youth groups, churches, Girl Scouts, all different schools, all mm -hmm. different kinds of youth groups like that. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Nanette, you have just recently hosted the Habersham Central Youth Leadership Banquet for the Chamber. The Chamber yes. sponsors the youth leadership program at the high school. Yes. And you've just recently hosted that for about uh, 80 or more students out there. Well, it's always an honor to get to be involved in recognition of young people especially. Mm -hmm. um, our main mission and philosophy is youth and young people so it's it's always wonderful to get to see. I think so so often our youth get a bad rap mm -hmm. nowadays and so to get to show them in a positive spin and a positive light is a great thing. And it's always great to have people at camp. Camp mm -hmm. is lonely when there's nobody around. So, I can only imagine. So, ha so having, having smiling faces and noise and people and serving good food is, is always a fun thing to do. Well, I know that our students, when I, we do the leadership banquet out there, and they love coming out there yeah. because it's kind of like getting into the backwoods. Right, And, right. Uh, and uh, they just really love coming out there, and so do I. Well, and a lot of our, we have some business groups, um, different adult organizations who will come out and do, and do meeting type works with us, and that's one of the fun things I think for them. They, they can take those ties off and those high heels mm -hmm. and put on their jeans and come comfortably and get a lot of work done in a more relaxed atmosphere. Right. Well, Nanette, I know when my child was little, small, and going off to camp, I was always very concerned about the supervision right. of the students at the camp. And I always wanted to know what the ratio was, boy, you know, uh, adults to students and so right. forth. Tell us about, uh, uh, you probably hire camp counselors, I guess. We do, we do. And, uh, and there probably may be some college students, I don't know. Tell us about the supervision for the students there. Okay. We have a, uh, one of the, one of the programs that we offer as part of our camp programmatic activities, we do a counselor and training program where we love to call ourselves growing our own staff. Mm -hmm. After you've been a camper and reach a certain, uh, after you, it, once you're in the 10th grade, you can go into a two-year dedicated leadership training program where we are teaching you not only what we expect from our camp, but leadership skills, safety skills, that kind of thing. And we have been very blessed to have a lot of our staff that we've grown in-house and taken through our training program. That's but we great. also, uh, before every summer session, summer season, we have a week-long staff training program mm -hmm. where they are um, certified in first aid CPR, mm -hmm. lifeguarding, canoeing instruction, horseback training. 
and uh, I call our staff, our college college age kids, mm -hmm. and uh, like I say, we we like to think that we we're growing our own, and safety by far is priority with us. Um, I tell my staff and staff training. My, my three packing orders, we do safety first, we do fun second, and we do learning third. Mm -hmm. As long as they're having fun, they don't really care if they're learning anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just the, uh, the, the experience of meeting other, other children and, and, and your peers and, and being away from home and, right. and uh, those types of things. Nanette, I remember as a child, one of my very fondest memories for myself even, what, uh, is going off to camp and that is an experience that uh, I just think that uh, helps mature the child but why do you think that children benefit so much from from quote going off to camp going to camp well camp is a camp is a world to itself mm -hmm. there is no other whether it's our camp or any other camp it mm -hmm. is just a make-believe world for a short period of time where you can come and be yourself and you don't have the peer, you don't have the pressures of um, majority of traditional camps are a non-competitive camp. You don't have to be the best cheerleader. You don't have to be the strongest tackle on the football team. Mm -hmm. You can just come and have fun and be yourself. And mm -hmm. it teaches, it teaches independence. It surely does. It teaches community relations mm -hmm. because you're living in a communal environment. Mm -hmm. I have so many of my college age staff members who come back to say, man, my first year in a dorm, you could tell who had been to camp and who hadn't because mm -hmm. the kids who had never been away from home didn't know how to get along with others. I they can, didn't know how to. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to play fair. I can understand that. Nanette, you mentioned uh, the, about the horseback riding out there. Yes. What other activities do you have, or facilities for activities there? We have our, our a 15 acre lake that's all encompassing on our property. Can they swim in the lake? We don't swim in the lake. We canoe in the lake okay. because we have an Olympic size outdoor beautiful swimming pool Ooh. where we do uh, water safety classes. We do traditional swim lessons. Plus, it's a great time in the afternoon when it's hot, hot and sunny to go out and just do afternoon free swim and a lot of night programs. Mm -hmm. We, um, of course, you can't have camp without arts and crafts. We, we always have uh, lots of arts and crafts activities, archery, sports and games, uh, knitting, you name it. Mm -hmm. we, we try to provide it, and a lot of it depends on what our staff bring in. We often have international staff, so sometimes we offer things called culture club, mm -hmm. where our Spanish or our um, South African staff people come in and, and teach our children about cultures that they may not get to experience. What a wonderful experience for them, Nanette. Nanette, our time is up. Thank you oh so much for being my guest today on well, Chamber thank Chat. Thank you. Thank you for being a Chamber member, and the best of luck to you all summer with all those kids out there in summer camp. It'll be loud and fun. I'm sure it will. And I always end with a quote. And my quote today is from John Quincy Adams. And it is inspired by the leadership banquet that we did there. And the quote says, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Thank you for joining us today. Around the world news to local entertainment you'll only find on Channel 4. Local people and local service from people in your community you know and trust. Windstream Cable Television.